can anyone find such a merciful personality whose mere audience sends all sins far away? One becomes purified after bathing in the waters of the sacred Ganges many times, but just the sight of you purifies the fallen souls. This is your great power. The holy name delivers one who has offended Lord Hari, but deliverance is impossible if one offends you. Your heart is always the resting place of Lord Govinda. And Lord Govinda says, the Vaishnavas are in my heart. I desire to have the dust of your holy feet in every birth I take. Please consider Naratam yours and be kind upon him. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay. Um, mobile phones in um, flight mode. Please. Or at least silent, but probably flight mode is the best, isn't it? Oops. So welcome everybody. This is uh, the appearance day of our beloved spiritual master and founder of Chari, His Divine Grace, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Parivrajika Chari Ashto Tarasata Sri Sri Madesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. We'll read from this year's Vyasa Puja book. <coughs> Vyasa Puja is a festival of gratitude. While the word gratitude feels insufficient when we talk about the level of indebtedness we feel towards Srila Prabhupada, it may be the best the English language has to offer. In common parlance, people say they're grateful for so many inconsequential acts of kindness. In comparison, the gift Srila Prabhupada has given us is unfathomable, and we strive to honour that gift with our deepest gratitude every day, but especially on the day of Vyasa Puja. In the world today, gratitude is understood to be a greatly desirable mindset. I was talking with Father Bob last night about gratitude. Uh, the Harvard Medical School writes, gratitude where am I? helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity and build strong relationships. Hmm. But the Harvard Medical School misses one key point. When it comes to the gratitude we feel towards Srila Prabhupada, the pain in the heart we feel, especially on Vyasa Puja Day, since we know that no amount of gratitude is adequate to reciprocate the absolute mercy he has shown us an excerpt from a poem by Kalakanta Prabhu that appeared in the February 1996 issue of Back to Godhead magazine gives some glimpse into what Srila Prabhupada did for us. Hmm. You could have stayed in Vrindavan, where chanting is most sweet, or moved to Holy Navadweep in spiritual retreat. Your God brothers had temples there with room enough for you to sit and preach each Gora Purnima to a guest or two. You could have said, it's Krishna's will, my visa was denied. I may have failed, but now I know at least that I have tried. 
Your patron said you'd die abroad. Your god brother just scoffed. You could have said, who'll meet the boat and guide me safely off? You could have had one look at us and said, what have I done? And caught the next boat heading home, unblamed by anyone. The Westerners, you could have said, can go to hell and stay. Who would have disagreed with you? We were well on our way. <laughs> Blessed, oh no, sorry. Instead, you laid your final years like flowers at Krishna's feet. Your guru's smile, <clears throat> your hidden guide, the Thakur's vision in reach. Hmm. How eternally grateful we are that Srila Prabhupada tolerated such unimaginable difficulties to give us the opportunity of devotional service. Another word that is frequently used on Vyasa Puja Day is indebted or indebtedness. According to the Veda base, the word indebted or indebtedness is used 157 times by Srila Prabhupada in his writings and talks. This mood of indebtedness is in our Sampradaya's DNA. And it starts with Lord Krishna himself. When I was away from Draupadi, she cried with the words, Hey Govinda, this call for me has put me in her debt. And that indebtedness is gradually increasing in my heart. From the Nectar of Devotion, chapter 21, Qualities of Krishna. Often the word is used to express a devotee's indebtedness to Krishna. Uddhava says to him, O oh, my Lord, transcendental poets and experts in spiritual science could not fully express their indebtedness to you, even if they were endowed with the prolonged lifetime of Brahma. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Chapter 29, Text 6. And of course, the word is used to describe the disciples' relationship with their spiritual master. Srila Prabhupada wrote to Mantrini Devi Dasi in July of 1976, it is not possible for the disciple to repay the debt to the spiritual master. Therefore, the disciple remains eternally indebted to the spiritual master and continually works in such a way that the spiritual master may become pleased upon him for such sincere services rendered. The offerings found in this book are an expression of the various writers' attempts to express this mood of gratitude and indebtedness. Writing a Vyasa Puja offering is not easy. We are forced to slow down and focus on the essential nature of who we are in relationship with our Guru and Krishna. It is a challenge. We likely come up with some initial thoughts of what to write and then decide we're not satisfied with them. We may discard them as superficial or cliché. We challenge ourselves to meditate more deeply. Some of us reflect on what our life would have been like had we not come in contact with Srila Prabhupada. A meditation he himself suggests in his purport to Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 2, Text 34. We should always consider what our position was before we came and what it is now. We had fallen into abominable lives. But now we have been given the opportunity to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Therefore, we should always appreciate this opportunity. We are pushed towards feelings of gratitude and indebtedness. By Krishna's grace, we finally are able to express something, albeit falling short of what we wish we could, have more, th we could more thoroughly express. <coughs> Oops. Maybe you can put them over there, 
While the offerings in this book are written months before Vyasa Puja Day, we again get the opportunity to focus on our gratitude and indebtedness today, the actual day of Vyasa Puja. We may be exhausted from the Janmashtami celebration the day and night before. Nobody's feeling that, are they? <laughs> but we push ourselves. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. But we push ourselves to attend and be fully present. As Srila Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja Day is a must celebration for all his followers. Naturally, we will do our best to bring out the sincerest side of ourselves this day. Since Srila Prabhupada had to teach us everything from scratch, that naturally included how to properly honour him on this day. In Japan in 1970, Srila Prabhupada arrived at noon in the temple for his Vyasa Puja celebration, but the standard preparations had not been done. There were no flowers for offering a, or offering of prasadam, and while there were several sannyasis present, a junior grihasta was offering arti. Srila Prabhupada reprimanded the devotees present and then instructed them on the proper way to observe Vyasa Puja, including offering flowers three times, a senior devotee's offering arti and a special feast. He allowed the devotees to rectify their mistake by redoing Vyasa Puja the next day. On another Vyasa Puja, on another Vyasa Puja, Srila Prabhupada noticed three of his senior disciples leaving the room during the offering of flowers, Pushpanjali. He was displeased and said so. In contrast, when Vyasa Puja was done nicely, Prabhupada expressed satisfaction. I'm so glad to hear how Janmashtami and Vyasa Puja were celebrated so sex successfully there in New Vrindavan. <coughs> Clearly, it is important to perform the Vyasa Puja ceremony properly with full attention and devotion. Finally, and most importantly, we recall the famous line in Srila Prabhupada's 1961 offering at his Guru Maharaja's Vyasa Puja. A festival of flowers and fruits is not the real worship. One who serves the Guru's message really worships him. This then, is the ultimate meaning of Vyasa Puja, to serve Srila Prabhupada's message on Vyasa Puja Day as well as every other day of the year with sincere surrender and love. Roger Bihari Das, co-director Iskon Resolve. Mm. Prabhupada's uh, Vyasa Puja. Um, Srila Prabhupada wrote the following poem in February 1935 on the occasion of the uh, Vyasa Puja celebration of his spiritual master. There's actually, there's also, there's actually a version of this book online. Anybody know where that is? There is a link somewhere if you want to read along. Um, I'll do it in a minute. <clears throat> I've, I got it the other day, a couple of days ago. <coughs> On the occasion of the Vyasa Puja celebration of his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, it delighted Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, especially the sixth stanza, which he felt captured the essence of his preaching against the Mayavadis. After reading this poem, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati was especially keen that Srila Prabhupada's that Srila Prabhupada preach and write in English. The following version of the poem was prepared from two sources. The version Srila Prabhupada included in the March 1952 edition of his Back to Godhead magazine and the version he wrote by hand on the back of a letter he sent Roya Ram thus on March the 20th, 1969. <clears throat> adore, adore ye all the happy day 
blessed than heaven, sweeter than May, when he appeared at Puri, the holy place, my Lord and Master, his divine grace. O oh, my Master, the evangelic angel, give us thy light, light up thy candle. Struggle for existence, a human race, the only hope, your divine grace. Misled we are, all going astray. Save us, Lord, our fervent pray. Wonder thy ways to turn our face. Adore thy feet, your divine grace. Forgotten Krishna, we fallen souls, paying most heavy the illusions toll. Darkness around, all distress, the only hope, your divine grace. Message of service thou hast brought, a meaningful life as Chaitanya wrought, unknown to all, it's full of brace, that's your gift, your divine grace. Absolute is sentient, thou hast proved. Impersonal calamity thou hast removed. This gives a life, a new and fresh. Worship thy feet, your divine grace. Had you not come... Who had told the message of Krishna, forceful and bold? That's your right. You have the mace. Save me, a fallen, your divine grace. The line of service as drawn by you is pleasing and healthy like morning dew. The oldest of all, but in new dress, miracle done your divine grace. Mm. Um. Okay, uh, hands up who's got an offering to read. Okay, what's that? Three people, four people? That's not very many. Put your arm up high and mighty. Oh. Well, at least high, so I can see it. Okay, there's a few. Radio. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, I think, Rumbaru, you must be the most senior here at the moment, I think. Is that right? And then... Uh, <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, Shastra also. Um, since you're our guest, Rumbaru. Nama Om Vidya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudavani Prachadine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paska Chadi Shantadine So every year it is our duty as your disciples, Srila Prabhupada, not only to glorify you, but also to share our realizations of what we have learned during this past year as we grow towards greater love and devotion to you and your mission. So this year, I have become increasingly aware of your mission as described in your Pranama Mantra to dispel the impersonalism that is rampant in this Kali Yuga culture. It goes exactly like this. You are kindly preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya Deva 
and delivering the Western countries, which are filled with impersonalism and voidism. And your strategy for dispelling this impersonalism is to melt the hardened hearts of so many who have been wounded by the cruel effects of the per lust, anger, and greed. And so you created this International Society for Krishna Consciousness as a means of reawakening our forgotten loving relationship with God and all other living beings. Your ISKCON movement is a training center meant to train us how to engage in loving relationship with the Supreme Person by offering him what we might desire for ourselves, beautiful clothing, delicious foods, gorgeous decorations, flowers, a comfortable bed, and perfumes. Mm. You created this ISKCON movement not only to train us how to enter relationship with the Supreme Person, but how to enter into relationships with each other and all living beings. That includes plants, animals, and the whole creation. Learning to love is a science and an art. We may have noticed that despite our universal yearning for love and belonging in the world today, isolation and loneliness is currently a mental health issue of epidemic proportions. You said yourself, Srila Prabhupada, that you created ISKCON in order to facilitate our engaging in six loving exchanges promoted by Rupa Goswami, the most intimate disciple of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they are, number one, offering gifts in charity. Number two, accepting charitable gifts. Number three, revealing one's mind in confidence. Number four, inquiring confidentially. Number five, accepting prashad. And six, offering prashadam. This year, as a person who is very much interested in creating heart-connecting relationships within and among ISKCON members, I realized that this these six loving exchanges were essentially three simple activities, which behavioral science research has shown to have nourished all native cultures everywhere since time immemorial, leading to a solid, compassionate, and caring community. They are, number one, sharing time as the greatest gift we can give and receive from others, because time is the most precious gift we have. You can never get your time back. Number two, sharing sacred meals with others because food sharing is a universal activity that creates community. Number three, sharing stories with others because when we share what is truly on our hearts and minds with trust, confident it won't be shared on fa Facebook tomorrow, then our universal need for love and belonging is satisfied. All that is to say, dear Srila Prabhupada, is thank you for, from the bottom of my heart for this simple yet powerful formula for solving our basic human need for love and belonging. Without it, the whole human race is doomed and destined for total destruction. Better than anyone, you understood that when our hearts are fully satisfied, we will freely let go of all other endeavors for external temporary happiness and that we will be able to rest in peace knowing that you have have us safely in the palm of your transcendental hands. Please bless me to be an instrument in your mission to heal us and the wounded world by engaging all of us in these simple but powerfully profound loving exchanges as we learn once again how to be spiritual beings living in the material world. Srila Prabhupada Ki Chai. Thank you. I'd like to express my gratitude to Srila Prabhupada for the poetry that he wrote and it inspires me to do something similar. I would title this The Seventies. I'm looking at the early seventies. It comes to mind 
that I was disgusted with what I, uh, I, I saw as Australian culture. The television ads were about meat pies, football, beer, and cigarettes galore. I thought, as I don't wish to accept this anymore, it was not a culture for a higher, growing vibration. My response was Europe, moving away from that type of exploitation. My travelling in Europe was novel and re interesting and all I asked for, yet on returning to London I was still looking for something more. Visiting the British Museum, I left walking down Berry Place, passing the Radha Krishna Temple, to eventually and eventually venturing into its grace. After a number of visits, I took up serving in London's clamour and later celebrated Govardhan Puja and stayed at Bhaktivedanta Manor. George Harrison's gift, who would occasionally visit with reciprocal, reciprocal congratulations. I ended up there as the secretary, sending out Prabhupada's publications. I responded to all who wrote in, requesting for further books and info per se, sending books into Africa, Europe, behind the Iron Curtain, and yes, around the UK. Srila Prabhupada, our constant traveller, seemed to be everywhere in preaching into success. London was the main stopover between India and the US. We were all over the moon in excitement with his presence there. I saw him first in 1976 and then in 77, when of course require, requiring a pelican lifting chair. In 1977, Prabhupada's health continued to deteriorate, yet he was giving of constantly traveling had he somewhat to somewhat abate. That was taken, that was when his planned trip to the US became a return to India. But there we were celebrating with Prabhupada, dancing as it be his insignia. Memories, being there at Bhaktivedanta Manor 45 years ago. We were totally blessed in celebrating Vyasa Puja with his grace. Srila Prabhupada bestowing blessings on all in attendance. My lifetime reward was that warm smile now ever remembered into ascendance. Thank you. Um. Over to you, Nara. Then uh, Gokularani, you uh, ready to go? Om Vishnu yep. Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale <laughs> Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swami Eti Namale Namaste Saraswati Devi Urupani Pacharani Neva Sai Sasunya Vadi Bhaktachare Sitarani Thank you uh, Shastra for uh, remembering those particular pastimes. I was there also at that time. In fact, on quite a number of occasions, I was fortunate, very fortunate, to uh, enjoy the association of Srila Prabhupada, both in London, in uh, France, Germany, and in India, different occasions. As you know, Prabhupada was a world traveler, and he, he never stayed very long in one place. But everywhere he stayed, there was always a smell of paint. <laughs> <laughs> because everything had to be done very quickly and it was always very exciting it was the best day of the year it's also still the best day of the year Vyasa Puja I think in 1972 or 3 uh, Prabhupada was actually in England for Vyasa Puja at Bhaktivedanta Manor I know I told you this story before, but it's still quite amusing. We were preparing once again, getting everything ready for his arrival. And our GBC at the time, Shama Sunda, 
He had a bit of a, he was a bit of an Anglo, Anglophile. He, he was American, but he liked everything about, you know, the British history and all that. And he'd been down to Westminster and Houses of Parliament. So he, he wanted to create something on the same lines at the manor. It's the Gothic, you know, the Gothic look. And um, so the altars were designed with sort of pointy arches, but the Vyasa Sun was very interesting because they didn't have much materials. There was never any money in those days. And so they had to improvise. So the improvisation was because the manor was built in this kind of mock Tudor style. It had a lot of, from a better word, knobs and knockers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, they thought, that, well, maybe we can, you know, this is in the days before we were recycling everything. This was early days. But we, we thought we could re-fashion uh, something. So one devotee went all over and he climbed on the roofs and he gathered little bits of timber designs and fireplaces and a variety of things. And they made a Biasa sand. And... Um, it, <laughs> It wasn't complete. Prabhupada at that time, but as he does, he would go on his walk and have a look around and inspect everything. And uh, that day, the devotees were working in the temple room. He said, okay, I'll go inside, have a look. And they'd almost completed building the Vyasa sand for him. And it was quite, you know, a bit Adam's family-ish, I suppose. <laughs> 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 so Prabhupada, you know, he looked at the Vyasasan <coughs> and he kind of had a slightly wry smile and he said, so you're expecting Lord Shiva? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was very nice. Those, those moments, those times were very nice. I remember another time, actually, I'll tell a few pastimes because when Prabhupada was there, um, it was early days, so <coughs> devotees were trying to introduce Srimati Tulsi Devi. <laughs> It hadn't been, it's a little bit started in America, but I don't think any European temples had Tulsi Devi. And at the manor, from the olden days, there was a greenhouse, a nice greenhouse. So they decided to make a Tulsi house. So um, they made Tulsi there, and then once again, Prabhupada was doing his walk, and everybody said, oh, look, through the Prabhupada, we have Tulsi. So Prabhupada went inside the room the greenhouse and looked. And he took off one leaf and then he tasted. And he said, no, 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 this is not Tulsi. And the devotee was looking after the, said, oh, well, it's Tulsi's sister, Basil. <laughs> 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 so Prabhupada said, no, 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 we're not interested in, in Tulsi's sister. So <laughs> So sometimes the pastimes were very sweet like that, very nice. And it was a, the wonderful thing about Sri Prabhupada was always fresh. I don't think he ever repeated anything very much, his stories, his, his examples. Uh, you know, you'd have your ear there. You could, you, you could uh, go on a morning walk and you'd <coughs> just be waiting for drops of nectar. It says if you get association with a pure devotee, you're very, very fortunate because it can take many, many lifetimes and you may never get the association. So the greatness of Srila Prabhupada was, I think, that he gave his association. In this Kali Yuga, people have fallen. In other ages, people were a bit more spiritual and they were looking for truth. And they would go, you know, on pilgrimages. They would perform spiritual activities. Kali Yuga people have fallen away quite a lot from all. You see all the empty churches and stuff. So, the, 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 not much interest, unfortunately. So, Prabhupada was so kind that he thought, I've got this mission. And this is important for all of us to remember that we don't serve Krishna directly. We're not so advanced. So, it says we have to serve the servant of the Lord. So, Prabhupada received instructions from his own spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. I think it was 1933 he told him. You speak English, you're an educated man. Why not go around the world? Why not go to the English-speaking countries and, 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 and spread Krishna consciousness there? Which was a very bold idea in 1933. 
And it took Prabhupada how long? 32, 33 years until he was 70 years of age. And at 70 years, I'm 69, so I know what I'm capable of, it's not much. So at 70 years of age, to go on your own, on an old boat, with very little money, to a foreign country, where you knew really nobody, and, and, and well, look, we have this. This, 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 this has come from that, and this, this is manifest in practically every city in the world now. So, the, the, by Prabhupada doing that, it's grown into this wonderful uh, movement and where so many people have benefited uh, immensely. <coughs> so, on your appearance day, Sri Prabhupada, we, we recognize you every day, of course, but we recognize you specially and we think of you more on these days and some of the activities you perform, perhaps some of the instructions he's given it to us, each in the personal instructions, maybe, or general instructions. And the wonderful thing in Krishna consciousness is even though Prabhupada's passed, we can say passed away, you can still get association. His, his presence is eternal because you know, Prabhupada's here, Prabhupada's temple, Prabhupada's devotees, and most of all his books and instructions. And he's also left us the deities, wherever he went, he installed deities, and we can worship them. And in that way, make plenty of progress in this, you know, this existence, which ho hopefully, um, you know, Prabhupada has enabled us to become free from and go back home, back to Godhead. Hare Krishna, Krishna Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. I can see some space on the floor here, so that means we're not jammed in sufficiently enough. So if you can come towards me, there's more at the door, many more at the door. So just move, please. Yeah, that's good. <coughs> there's still space here, look. Uh. Okay, where do you go? Uh, Gokula Rani, has, have you got the mic? Where's the mic? Yep, thanks. Working. Everyone who met Srila Prabhupada loved him. According to Lord Chaitanya, a man is famous when he's known as a great devotee. That mm. is real fame. And that is Srila Prabhupada. He, he was and is a great man in Krishna consciousness and truly famous. I first um, actually saw and heard Srila Prabhupada here in Melbourne um, in 1974. And he gave a, um, a discourse in the Melbourne Town Hall where he stressed to try to understand and prepare oneself to go back to Godhead. That's the business of human life. Everything else is simply a waste of time. And to me, that was like groundbreaking. Um, I thought, but I don't think I could ever join the movement. But then three or four months later, when I was in London, I joined. And <laughs> I think it was because the strength of a pure devotee's words enter one's heart. So I think probably that's what happened. Um, Prabhupada was always very dignified in the way he walked, the way he spoke, the way he ate. Even when needing to use a walking cane, he appeared very dignified. Uh, I heard one story about when in South Africa, he was sitting, they were dr driving somewhere, the devotees were driving somewhere, and he was sitting in the back seat and all of a sudden, he held on to his walking stick very strongly. And then the next minute, they had a little bit of a car accident. So that signified to me that Krishna was always in, um, to speaking to Prabhupada. He was always in contact with Krishna. Uh, Prabhupada once said that, um, 
see Krishna as your husband and spiritual master as one's father. In fact, when I saw Prabhupada again in London, when we were greeting him at the airport, I had an overwhelming feeling or, I don't know, realisation <coughs> that Prabhupada was truly my father. And that had been forever, like for lifetimes. Despite having an attachment to my birth father, this was so much greater. And at that same time, um, when we were greeting Prabhupada at the airport, there were two lines of devotees and Prabhupada was walking down the middle of the, of the, of the lines and um, Hema Vati, she was the... Um, um, she, she was the GBC's wife, she said to me, you've got to lean over so Prabhupada can see you and, and lean and, you know, show your face. And I thought, oh, I can't be that bold. But she made me do it. And then Prabhupada looked at both of us and he gave us such a big smile. It was like the sun shining. So that was pretty amazing for me. Um, although Prabhupada had, had many aspects to him, he could be very serious and grave, <coughs> but he could also be very quick-witted and joyful. He would especially like to make fun of bogus gurus. And <laughs> he described once a yogi in Calcutta who would make a show of detachment, and any gifts people would give to him, he would throw in the Howrah River. But then at night, He'd, he'd come with a net and pull all the gifts out of the river with the, fi with the fishing net. <laughs> um, one other time, someone said to Prabhupada, today, Srila Prabhupada, you look very beautiful. And he said, yes, but why not every day? <laughs> so, <laughs> and... Another, and he also liked to tease journalists. And one time, a sort of boldish reporter, Chikali, said to Prabhupada, do you know everything? And Prabhupada paused for a minute and then he said, yes. So uh, I just think Srila Prabhupada is truly remarkable. Like um, Narahari was saying at the age of 69, to travel to America to follow his guru's instructions <laughs> and to start our movement. He would always say, I'm just following my guru's instructions. He was always so <coughs> humble. He would never take any accolades for him. Just He would always say, I'm just a servant. Um, and if it wasn't for him, ISKCON would never have happened. Jai Shri Prabhupada. Bhakta. Prabhav, are you hiding somewhere, Prabhav? Where are you? Put your hand up. Ah, there he is. He's not hiding. Are you the youngest? You're the youngest of Prabhupada's disciples. Is that right? Yeah. Youngest, but not the most, not the least, I'm sure. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nivishesh Srinivadi Vashyata Deshacharine um, yeah, I was just uh, looking at the um, transcendental bhajan kuti here <laughs> and it's reminding me of Mayapur when Srila Prabhupada uh, in the beginning, when he first was uh, staying in Mayapur, they built a hut uh, before all the uh, other places he was staying in there. So, Prabhupada is, um, started a humble beginning, the Hare Krishna movement, and like everyone was saying, and now we have this uh, International Society for Krishna Consciousness, uh, such a vast uh, movement. and. I'm just uh, going to say yesterday here uh, in Melbourne Temple um, is the example of that, Prabhupada's um, work. And wherever Prabhupada went and his lotus feet touched those places, it's, it's a success. 
and this Melbourne temple is the example of that. His room is here, his uh, proper house, and when he stayed here, and it's such a success. And I was saying, this morning I was talking in the class that Krishna has a big family. You know, he had 16,108 wives, and each of them had 10 children, and they had their children, so it's a huge family. And that we are in a Krishna's Prabhupada's family is also expanding Prabhupada's family. And we don't have to do that much. We can just be part of the family. And um, it's a glorious to be in Prabhupada's family. And so where Prabhupada, wherever Prabhupada went, uh, it became such a transcendental place because of his lotus feet touched those places. And like in Mayapur, there's the, they have the, one of the second building in Mayapur. It's, it's called the long building. So Prabhupada, they have the Khans building, Lotus building, and um, Gada building, and they have the long building. So Prabhupada said there will be long building. So everybody calls a long building, as uh, it came from Prabhupada. And so we are so fortunate to be part of Srila Prabhupada's family, and we can, um, like uh, Narayana Prabhu was saying, we can feel Prabhupada is still here through his, if he follows instruction, we, we're still associating with Prabhupada, just like Krishna is there in the holy name. So if you actually following the instruction of Srila Prabhupada, you're associating with Prabhupada. He's here, he's here in his instructions. And it's just like Prabhupada, it's the same seat where Prabhupada is sitting now, you know, there are lectures where he spoke from there. He was sitting there, the devotee sitting in the temple room. So, and he still is here. Someone can tell you that if they decide to leave the temple, he may speak to you. So don't leave. So he's, he, he can inspire us. And you all, all of you devotees, uh, are, are, are they connected to Prabhupada by being in Prabhupada's family? It's not that he haven't, just like Krishna who spoke Bhagavad Gita 5,000 years ago. He may think, oh, it's a mythology, it happened so long ago. But Prabhupada is still here in his instructions. Same for Krishna, he's here in his instructions. So if you say Krishna spoke 5,000 years ago Bhagavad Gita, you know, I don't believe it. And Prabhupada was here. Prabhupada is telling the same thing. And Prabhupada he was only here not long ago. So you are the living example. And what a witness, we witness Prabhupada. So even if he didn't see, but he is here, we can tell you. Just like if, he, if you um, uh, don't know where you're going, you can use a GPS. That will tell you. Similarly, Guru Srila Prabhupada has come here. So Krishna comes, his representative comes to tell us. Um, so yesterday was the Janmashtami, Krishna came. So if you, we can know Krishna by the mercy of Guru, by the mercy of Guru we can know Krishna. So they are both related. So we have to be, yesterday I couldn't even walk in the temple. It was so packed here. So I feel so good here today because it's a little bit peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, um, um, we can relish and we can enjoy the, the hard work of Srila Prabhupada. Like Narayana Prabhu was saying, one single man, elderly man, he went with uh, practically nothing. He took 40 rupees and he, banged, he brought the 40 rupees back to India. He took a rickshaw with it. And you can see now, so we all are in the same family of Prabhupada. If we can work hard, like Srila Prabhupada worked hard. Success is just there. We are in Prabhupada's family. So we're, nobody's left out. Every one of us are very important because we're in the same family. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. <coughs> Even with a GPS, you've got to be careful. Yeah. Hey, Gyana Samudra, where are you? Please raise your hand. Gyana? Out the back there, Haribo, uh, pass the mic over to Gana Samudra, please. Srimati Bhakti Padanta Swaminiti Namne, Namaste Sarasvati Devi Gauravani Vicharne, Nebhase Sasunavari Paschichari Dastane. 
So once again, we've uh, had uh, a very ecstatic festival. <laughs> Thanks to the devotees and Shiddha Prabhupada, we've come in association of the spiritual world. Mm. I was um, being, because we've had such a hard time over the last couple of years, you know, we've become a little bit more introspective with ourselves, which is, which is a gift in ourselves. To appreciate actually what Shiddha Prabhupada has given us, we've had a little time to reflect on those things. Um, one of my reflections was, was um, how the, uh, the vision of, of the pure devotees or of our Acharya system, how uh, Bhaktivinoda Kaur, how he was looking at Maipur, uh, looking over these rice paddies and, and forests, and uh, he saw a temple. Right, a temple that we we are actually seeing now manifesting, but a hundred years ago there was no temple, although Maharaj saw a temple there, and and uh, the devotees at the time were we we bewildered. You know, it, you're, you're an old man. You've seen things. You know, there's nothing out there. There's just tigers. You know. But uh, <coughs> Maharaj saw this temple, a magnificent temple, and, and now we're seeing it. We're seeing the vision of, of uh, Acharyas manifesting mm -hmm. in the same way like Srila Prabhupada, when he came to Melbourne Temple, there was, what, 65 of us. We, we were boarding on Maharaj. Los Angeles was always in front, you know. They had about 85 or something, and we had about 65, so we were getting there. But even then, Prabhupada, when we asked Prabhupada, well, what do you think? And Prabhupada said, too small, you know? So Prabhupada, you know, he could see that, you know, he saw everybody here, everybody in this temple room, you know, not to speak the temple room and the kitchen and this compound. He saw you, you, you people, you, you devotees, he saw you here, you know? I mean, we, we, we couldn't see at the time all your personalities, but Prabhupada did. He saw every one of you sitting in before him, and he said, yeah, it's too small. You know, we can't pack anymore, and of course, there's a few spaces here, but, but you know, Prabhupada said, too small. And, and uh, so we have to understand that, you know, the vision of our acharyas is that every town and village, temple bells will ring. <coughs> so are we to just sit down and, and, and think, oh, okay, it's going to happen, or do we actually envision that, that uh, take, take on the vision of our acharyas and actually see it? It's, it actually has happened. It's, it's manifested. It's just time that's separating us. Are we going to associate just with the material energy that we're in now, or associate with the spiritual energy and actually see it, actually manifested? Because it has manifested, every town and village, temple bells ring. So here we have an opportunity to actually see the vision of, of these acharyas and, and uh, associate with that, that vision and become enthusiastic with the vision. You know, I mean, if we're going to take the vision of, of uh, our politicians and so forth, then it's, you know, Every four years it changes, you know, new, new management, new ways. But, but the vision of our acharyas is, is there, you know, like going back to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that every town and village temple bells will ring. So it is a time for reflection and it is time for like inner, inner uh, uh, appreciation of that what Srila Prabhupada has given us, you know, this vision of of, of positiveness and truth um, circulating and emanating this planet. Even though there's so much disturbance going on, but for the Vaishnav, he actually uh, is above that. You know, his vision is every town and village. You know, there's, there's the devotees there and he can hear the sounds and he can see the, 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 the spiritual soul and every, every living entity chanting and dancing. So mm. Srila Prabhupada has given us this gift. And we're very fortunate, I mean, 
we were praying for this gift from the time that we were born. Actually, before we were born, you know, we were praying, to please engage us in your transcendental service. <coughs> of course, when we came out of our mother's womb, then, uh, you know, that all became very bewildering and we forgot that prayer, that, that pure prayer that we all were praying to the Lord for. So now Srila Prabhupada has, has given us that, uh, that gift again so that we can actually engage ourselves in the loving service of, of um, Radhavarva and, um, and the service of the Vaishnava Charyas. So um, let's all um, look around us and, and uh, appreciate actually the service of every, every one of us and the sincerity of, that we're putting ourselves uh, at the lotus feet, you know, and and I'm I'm sure that uh, you know our realizations will become more and more and more and more and more uh, wonderful as we engage in devotional service and chant and read and associate with Shri Prabhupada and his devotees. So thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Me, Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Over to Bhakta. Um, yeah, okay. Well, they Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmaye Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Mukkam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langayate Girim Yat Kripa Tamaham Bande Sri Gurum Dinatarinam Dear Srila Prabhupada, on this auspicious occasion of your Vyasa Puja, I'd like to thank you for, <coughs> well, for everything. <laughs> we had such a wonderful day yesterday. It's probably the best uh, Jammastami I've ever experienced. It was so much fun. All day was just fun for me. <laughs> and. Uh, of course, it hasn't always been like that. Um, I, I, I'm, John Mustami is just such an amazing experience for me because 15 years ago, I, was, I had to be over everything. Well, I had to have lists and you know, rosters and the like. And I, I, try, I well, at that, at that point in time, um, there weren't as many as we as many devotees as we have now and so uh, you know the responsibility fell on a few persons shoulders of course it grew it grew to the point where I realized ooh, nobody can manage this event and know everything that's going on uh, so these days as a devotee say to me oh you must be really busy it's just must to me and I say, well, actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> of course, I am busy. But with the festival and with John Mustami, um, I don't do anything, actually. Well, I, I shouldn't say I don't do anything, but I'll, I'll tell you what I did. I, I did some things, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I chanted Hare Krishna. That was nice. But I had to leave the temple because... I, t I thought, I'll go and find a place in the sunshine where I can just chant Hare Krishna. But it didn't happen because every two minutes there was a devotee that would come out and talk to me. So I had to go away and chant Hare Krishna in, you know, by myself. Uh, and that was very pleasant, of, uh, of course. But then, um, you know, most of the day I spent with the devotees. And interesting, many devotees who... Um, I haven't seen for years, or you know, well, I haven't seen. We haven't seen everybody for at least two years. But uh, it, it was interesting. Um, there's a devotee. She was a a single lady in the ashram, and um, I've forgotten her name. Actually, a bit embarrassing. And uh, her husband 
He also lived in the ashram for a while. They live in, she lives in Ballarat. And um, he was unfortunately uh, killed in a motorcycle accident some years ago. But um, she was here with her daughter. And her daughter looked exactly like her when she was in, when she was in the ashram, right? The daughter. And of course the daughter now has got children eight and six, right? So, but um, I recognised her and I, and I just couldn't, I knew, I knew her, but I couldn't quite. So I went and had a chat with her and they were just so happy to be at the temple and so happy to hear how How's, you know, how's Crossways going? I told them we've got, you know, 400 initiated devotees in the community now. And she was like, oh, wow, that's really good, you know. So it was just, it was nice to, just for me to uh, meet and greet many people. And, and uh, of course, you know, that, that always, it, it always strikes me, especially these days, you know, the potency of, Srila Prabhupada's mission, his vision, and his application really of what the Goswamis taught and what Lord Chaitanya, what Lord Chaitanya's mission was that um, uh, he's, Prabhupada has established this um, society and really because we followed Prabhupada's instructions and um, um, putting in in place effectively the vision of, of Lord Chaitanya and the Goswamis and the Acharyas we're seeing our community expand and this is, you know, it's not, it's not magic in one, well it is magic, right? Prabhupada said this is his magic, right? But <clears throat> it's not rocket science, it actually can be duplicated and it is being duplicated. Nice point that Jnana mentioned was that this is happening, all, and I think Nara also, this is happening all over the world. But it's certainly very satisfying for me to see on Janmashtami just the quantity of devotees doing so much service and I guess the luxury for me is I can just walk around and talk to people and make friends and re-establish relationships. And, um, you know, sometimes I feel a bit embarrassed by that and, you know, I think I'm not doing anything. But then at the same time, I um, had an interesting experience. Um, uh, the devotees invited me into uh, lunch that was being served for some of our members who had given sizable donations. Uh, one of them, I think, was $10,000, another $9,000. So, you know, um, uh, significant contribution to keeping everything, keeping this festival and certainly the temple ticking over. And um, so OJSV invited me in and introduced me to the, to the devotees there that were supporting the temple. And, and, and I got the opportunity to thank them, and you know, which is which is important, you know. So, even though I might not be doing anything kind of physical, at the same time, the responsibility of connecting with people and just thanking them for the service—it's it, actually very, 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 very important. And then one of the gentlemen said to me, "We really appreciate your devotees because they're giving us so much good advice." And I said to him, yes, well, Hare Krishnas are pretty good at giving people advice, that's for sure. <laughs> I hope it was good advice. And he said, yes. He told us, we don't believe in God. We know God. Right? So you should know God. Right? I thought that was pretty good. Because, you know, OJSV is a... Is OJSV here? Yeah, OJSV is a pretty pushy guy. Right? <laughs> Uh, but I was appreciating it, it's it's not, and he was I saw it caught, I, I just feel later on he had a stick of tilak in his hand right and he was 
He said, and I said, what are you doing? Are you making people wear tealark? Because you don't know. He said, no, no, they want it. They want it. <laughs> so, but I was thinking, how practical, how practical is that, right? This is, if you want people to belong to the Hare Krishnas, you get them to wear tealark, right? Pretty much straight away, so. But uh, it made me appreciate Srila Prabhupada, because Prabhupada was a strong preacher. Right? He, was, he got people to become devotees and, and got them to participate. So I was, I was appreciating how this, these devotees were contributing to our efforts. And so in their, in their small way, of course, you know, giving a ten or $11,000 donation is not a small thing, I guess, but... Uh, uh, showing some appreciation for what they're doing. And of course, that's something we should, you know, we, we, Brother Bihari was mentioning gratitude. And, and gratitude is, is so important. And so <clears throat> I was appreciating also, the, you know, this is my opportunity to show uh, appreciation. And, and uh, I just introduced me later on. Was it you? I think somebody introduced me later on to one lady who donated $15,000 worth of ghee to keep our ghee supplies running for the whole year, right? So, you know, obviously, you know, we appreciate, we appreciate the uh, support and, and I appreciate the support, and especially the support of all of, all of you as well. It was, um, it was really enjoy, and the sets of clothes, oh, um, um, who's our DD set? Soa? Maduri. Maduri. I was. Uh, I didn't see Maduri yesterday, and I'm not sure if Maduri's here today either. And of course, she's not here. She isn't she? No, she's not here. Oh, oh, well, oh, oh, COVID. Yeah. So Maduri also, she's a rather diminutive uh, devotee in one sense, small devotee. But she did, she's done a wonderful service, so I was really appreciating the um, sets of clothes, the, the Didi sets, really beautiful. Radha Balabha's wearing the set that we offered yesterday. But also the night set was really, really well done too. That was just amazing. So thank you to uh, Madhuri's uh, contribution. And... Um, And, and, you know, the, the, the cream, well, actually, the, the Midnight Arty for me was really very, very special with Ghana and um, Joe Sachi. Ghana and I have been doing artish together since 1980, no, 90, no 1979. Uh, and it's, I, 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 you know, when you're leading the arty, you're thinking, uh oh, are these guys going to keep up with me or what's going on? <laughs> The Gyan and I have been doing it for so long together, we always finish at the, at the same time, you know, we've been doing it. So that was really, and of course, the, the, the Didi's just looking so beautiful, so special. And, oh, and Nishringa Maharaji's Kirtan, she's a top, top Kirtan leader. Yeah, that was a fantastic choice. But the, the, the real, the cream of the evening was the boys' drama. And if you didn't get to see the boys' drama, I highly recommend you see the replay because it was super, super funny. <laughs> and it was so fun. It, 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 the kids were laughing and clapping and banging their feet on the floor. They were enjoying it, but so were the parents. <laughs> they were laughing and laughing and laughing right? because the boys were taking the mickey out of their parents. It was so funny. <laughs> and Siddhanta dressed up as a... As a, as a classic or a typical Indian mum. <laughs> he was... <laughs> so that was really, you know, that was so entertaining to see. And especially, you know, to see our younger... the younger devotees, our future, well, hopefully, our future, and, and their enthusiasm for the... for Jamastami and the girls as well. I have to say, the girls' performance of the Gita, that was also uh, 
very accomplished and very polished and, and very inspiring, actually. Um, the boys was comedy, so that got more laughter and more, you know. But the girls' performance also was very special. And I, they pushed me, actually. I, I bumped into them a few days before, and they said, you've got to come to our performance quarter past eight. We're on. So I went. So... Um, um, yeah, it really, it, uh, Shamastami and of course Vyasa Puja is such a great opportunity for us to celebrate and uh, to participate and um, um, it's all really due to Srila Prabhupada and, um, and Prabhupada's um, disciples as well. You know, Srila Prabhupada is like, you know, he says, Krishna is the powerhouse and the parampara connects us to Krishna. And through that parampara, that energy of Krishna consciousness is channeled or directed. But we can, and, and if one's faithful to the parampara and basically repeats the same message and puts that message into practice, then the same potency can come through us. Right? This is this is our philosophy, and so we can see what a what an amazing channel or what amazing conduit of energy and power is coming through Srila Prabhupada. Right? When I, when I heard about Srila Prabhupada, I used to think he was a towering giant. When I heard the stories about the things that he did and how he impacted devotees' lives. <clears throat> and then when we installed Srila Prabhupada, when Prabhupada came in the early 80s and we installed him on the Vyasa Sun, I thought, wow, Prabhupada's just a little, he's so little. But of course, you know, that's just, that's an illusion because the potency that comes through Srila Prabhupada, and for me, it, I never met, Shula, many of us, we haven't met Srila Prabhupada in person, but we met him through his disciples. And because those devotees repeated the same message, they taught the same thing that Srila Prabhupada was teaching, when we followed those instructions, we got the same benefits. It didn't matter that we didn't get it direct. It doesn't matter. Um, of course, it's beneficial, and the potency of Srila Prabhupada in his vapu form is not to be underestimated, but at the same time... Uh, we are getting the benefits of Prabhupada's association by the association of his sincere disciples who are repeating basic, following his instructions and repeating his message. Uh, so, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Gora Bhakta Brinda ki jai, Melbourne Mahaprabhu Mandira ki jai, Gora Bhakta Brinda ki jai. Hare Krishna. Mm. Bhakta, I think you are next. Hare Krishna. Jai, thanks, Sandhya Ruta Prabhu. Namo um, Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Vastaya, Bhutale, Shumadi Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Niti Namine, Namaste, Saraswati Devam, Gauravani Bhacharani, Nevisesha Shunyavadi Pasha Chade Jatarani. So I've titled my Vyasa Puja homage, How Could This Have Happened to Me? <laughs> Dear Srila Prabhupada, just recently I finished reading Shamasundra's wonderful book Chasing Rhinos with the Swami Volume 2 and I just want to quote a section at the very end of that book. This is where if you've read that book uh, Prabhupada is uh, going through all the different philosophies with Shamasundra and debunking all their sort of bogus philosophies, Freud, Kant, uh, Jung, all these different peoples. So after this, uh, this is Sharma Sundara quoting, when you hear Srila Prabhupada in these philosoph philosoph philosophy debates, you feel that he's telling only 1% of what he knows. His knowledge is so vast that you can safely say Prabhupada knows everything. This is especially true when he talks about universes, how universes are formed, how time and space are managed by the demigods, describing energies which cannot be conceived, 
If you try to figure out the forms and expansions of Vishnu, forget it. Prabhupada knows all this, but it's far beyond my ability to follow. I had intensely questioned my professions, professors at first-class colleges in the US and Europe. I had roamed the world in search of a person with all the answers, reading everything I could, I could, I could get my hands on. Now after months of questioning <coughs> Bhaktivedanta Swami on every aspect of philosophy, I have concluded, Prabhupada knows everything. <laughs> to have found in my lifetime this one person who knows so much, what to speak of sitting at his feet on a daily basis, how rare is this opportunity? Out of billions of people on this planet, how lucky am I? It's better than lifting a rock in your backyard and finding a 10,000 carat diamond, the most precious thing on the planet. How could this have happened to me? So after reading that, um, you can apply that to all of us. You know, like last night as Ani Ruder and the other devotees were saying, there were literally thousands of people here. And as Jnana Samudra says, Prabhupada could see this already. So this is better than winning. To have Prabhupada's association and to be part of the Hare Krishna movement is better than winning Powerball, better than <laughs> finding a 10,000 carat diamond. We found Srila Prabhupada. I was also a seeker, like Shama Sundara Prabhu, back in the 70s, and like many of us, scouring different philosophies and religions to find the truth, only to be disappointed at every turn. Now, it's not that those truths and those philosophies weren't complete, it was just they lacked something. It was just not the full package. And then I found Srila Prabhupada. Well, I found Srila Prabhupada through his books and his writings. And once I realized he answered all the questions, I decided that finally, ah, I found the spiritual, my spiritual teacher. He left the world before I was unable to link up with him. Or so I thought. In my years in Krishna consciousness, I found that Srila Prabhupada remains with us and will do so for the next 10,000 years in his writings, his teachings, temples, his murti form and above all in the remembrance of his early disciples. He is still the valuable gem, the priceless artwork, the grand prize for all of us within the Hare Krishna movement. How could this have happened to us? And so we're so, we're so fortunate. In my service, working with different faith traditions, I'm constantly reminded of that great fortune. Thank you so much, Srila Prabhupada, for coming into my life and answering all my philosophical and religious questions and providing the means by which I can know and serve the Supreme Lord and slowly rectify this big-bodied, conditioned living entity. Your grand disciple, Bhaktadas. Srila Prabhupada, Aki Mount Vishnu Padaya Krishna Paslai Buddha, she might have backed up an under Swamini to nominate. Namaste, Salazote Deve, Gorvani Pachani, Neva says the Sunya Vali Pashtati de Shitaline. Dear Shula Prabhupada, yesterday was Sri Krishna Jamastami, Lord Krishna's appearance day, and today we are celebrating your appearance day. So today I would like to first of all thank Lord Krishna for asking you to come to this material world. And then I would like to thank you for agreeing to come. You gave us everything. This material world is empty and everything in it, everything we strive for materially, just a blip on the screen of our existence. Here today, gone tomorrow. You taught us that we are not these material bodies, that we are souls, and that therefore we create everything we experience around us in our existence through our consciousness, and that therefore we should lift our consciousness to our original spiritual consciousness, 
Krishna consciousness, because only then can we be truly happy and fulfilled, <coughs> because only then are we being who we truly are, the soul in our service to God. And not only did you tell us this, you gave us the means to do it in such a way that we can absorb all our senses in service to God. The older I get, the more I appreciate your sacrifice, how at the age of 69, 70, you started this mission. To me, this proves you were truly empowered by Krishna to fulfill his request. This material world is full of challenges, even within this movement. Devotees come to this movement with their own baggage, which causes friction within themselves and with others. It is not always easy. And we hear of many that have left the association of the Vaishnavas. This is unfortunately what happens when we focus on what is not right, the problems, instead of focusing on appreciating you and your mercy. You have given us everything. By your mercy, we are able to drink the nectar of the Supreme Lord Krishna. Through our ears in Japa, Kirtan, classes, through our eyes in seeing the form of deity, through smell with wonderful fragrances offered to the Lord, through touch in touching the form of the deity, and warm hugs with so many Vaishnava friends. And through taste in honoring delicious prasadam, whether a simple kitchari or the many amazing festival feasts we experience throughout the years. <coughs> Dear Srila Prabhupada, thank you for everything. And thank you for allowing me to remain in the association of your wonderful servants. Without you, we are nothing. And thanks to you, we have everything. Thanks to you, we are real. I beg to remain your humble servant, Bhakti David Dasi. Kaisava, over here. Five minutes. I've got five minutes? Yeah, well, it's 25 past now. Okay. Jai Shila Prabhupada Ki. Yay! So, uh, this decoration around Prabhupada is very beautiful, and it's. Uh, Prabhupada's Bhajan Kutir in Mayapur. And when Prabhupada first went to Mayapur and he first saw that Bhajan Kutir, uh, he'd just come from Mumbai. And he was staying with very wealthy uh, life members. I think their names were, it was Kartikeya Mahadevi, I think, I can't remember. It was very, very wealthy people who were staying in a mansion. They had many cars and Prabhupada was living in opulence. But then when he came to Mayapur and he saw the hut, and he uh, first <coughs> went into the hut. He said, this is real opulence. He said, this is how a Brahmana lives. This is Brahminical uh, opulence. So it's such a beautiful hut. And there were many pastimes in that hut. Prabhupada had, it's still there now. Uh, above and under Prabhu, uh, he said to Prabhupada when they started building things in Mayapur, he actually said to Prabhupada, should we remove the hut? And Prabhupada said, no, keep it for historical purposes. So when we go there, we can see this is where Prabhupada was. Mm. And uh, <coughs> Prabhupada was standing in front of the hut and he said, this is what we were. <coughs> and then he said, and this is what we became. And he pointed to the TOVP, which wasn't there yet. <laughs> but yeah, Prabhupada, and this is what we will become. Mm. So now, you know, Prabhupada's hut is there, and then next to it is TOVP. Mm. So we see where Prabhupada began and where it's gone to, or where it's going to. Mm. 
So there were many pastimes in that hut. Prabhupada had one half to himself and the other half was for his disciples. And it was very austere. And Tamal Krishna Maharaj used to tell about how austere it was. And Prabhupada, as devotees been saying, he was so powerful and so determined, he was just on a march to take over the universe. And basically you had to come with him. And he was, he, he was concerned about his disciples, but sometimes he couldn't offer so much facility. And they just had to put up with all sorts of austerities. And sometimes I think about that, because now look at you know, the opulence that we live in. You know, this temple and so much opulence. But Prabhupada's first disciples, they had to go through so much austerity to establish the movement. So Tamal Krishnamara said that they were sleeping. Uh, you know, Prabhupada had half the hut, then they had the other half. And then there was a veranda out the front, which you see when you go there. So Prabhupada, uh, Tamal Krishnamara was sleeping on the veranda, just outside Prabhupada's room. So Prabhupada took rest about 10.30. Everyone took rest. And Prabhupada gets up at 12.30 because Prabhupada starts translating. So Tamal Krishnamara was sleeping on the, on the balcony just outside. And he was asleep in the dark. There was, I don't think there was electricity then. There was no electricity? No, there's no electricity. So, so you know, he's in the dark and he's asleep on the balcony. And the next minute he, he feels someone kicking him. <laughs> so he wakes up and he looks up. And it's Prabhupada's looking over him. And Prabhupada said, you were snoring. <laughs> <laughs> and Tamal Krishna looked up, he's startled, and he said, I was not snoring. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, no, you were snoring. Go and sleep somewhere else. <laughs> so I mean, what do you do? It's Prabhupada. He's telling, he's telling you to go and sleep somewhere else. So, so he gets up in the dark, and he just wanders off into the dark and then he found, he said there were three options. There was a pile of sand, a pile of rock and a pile of steel. <laughs> because they were building the, uh, it must have been the conch building. Uh, or the lo no, sorry, the lotus building. So he walks off into the dark and he chose the sand because that was the softest option. <laughs> so he slept on the sand. He comes back the next morning for Mongolati and, you know, and the day gets starts going and Prabhupada didn't even say like oh where were you did you sleep okay did you find just keep going that was it Prabhupada was just on a march <laughs> to take over the world and you just had to keep up with him basically and now these days you know we get upset if we don't have enough facility or oh, I didn't get enough gulab jamans for lunch or <laughs> you know whatever our difficult uh, our austerity is now or oh, I didn't get enough oh, Prabhu I didn't get enough puris for prasadam it's like I didn't, back, back I, didn't, I didn't get enough flowers to make my garlands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the, lila, the lilas continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're, we're very spoilt now. And sometimes I reflect on this, especially when I saw the hut. I walked in, it, it makes us remember how simple it was in the beginning. But Prabhupada had a vision and he was ready to take over. You know, and he's, that's his march, he, he's trying to take over. So we're all here just to assist him. Uh, Andy Rudy Prabhu told me the other day that there's, this year there's been 160 devotees who are now ready for initiation or have taken initiation. Just this year, 160 new devotees getting initiated. I mean, what an offering to Srila Prabhupada. What an offering. Andy Rudy Prabhu and his team, uh, you know, what an offering to Prabhupada. And, you know, we're very uh, fortunate. Uh, last week we had an uh, award ceremony. Oh, it was this week, was it? Yep. Oh, it was this week. Tuesday. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, time's flying. When you're in Prabhupada's movement, time becomes a little irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, on Tuesday, was it? Yep. We had an uh, award ceremony and seven of our devotees, they completed their Bhakti Vedanta qualification. Very well. So, you know, very, very nice. So we started in 2003, we started Bhakti Shastri, then we did Bhakti Vaibhav, and then we did Bhakti Vedanta, and now we're doing Bhakti Sarvabhoma. And my good friend Atul Krishna Prabhu, who is one of, the, uh, one of the devotees who also joined here in Melbourne, who is now involved in education around ISKCON, he said there's only 1%, there's 650 temples in ISKCON. Oh, only 1%. 750. Yeah. Is it 750 now? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. So it's 750 temples in ISKCON now, and only 1% have these, this level of courses in the world. You know, that means there's only six, seven temples in the whole world. 
that can offer you a Bhakti Vedanta course, a Bhakti Sava Bomber, a Bhakti Vaibhav, Bhakti Shastri. This is, this is one of the best temples on the planet. We're not saying this to be proud, but it is one of the best temples on the planet. We, we, we can't estimate our good fortune to be a part of this. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we've got one offering that has had a lot of effort put into it. Uh, Gopa Vrindesh Prabhu has prepared another uh, superlative offering for Srila Prabhupada on his Vyasa Puja. Um, he's going to offer it to Prabhupada now. It's a. <clears throat> You, you better tell us what it is, Gopa. So I, I may not do it justice, but you may not either. But anyway. Om Agnana Timiranta Sya, Agnana Jana Shala Kya, Chakshurun Vilanta Nyena Tasmay Shri Guru Bhanda Maha, Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhudale Shri Madhe Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitnamine, Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine, Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, last few months, maybe maybe a month back or two, three months, I was quite a bit meditating on Srila Prabhupada's books, the gift of Srila Prabhupada's books, because that is the prime connection that I got from Srila Prabhupada as I came to Krishna Consciousness. And uh, I remember the incident where uh, I forgot the place where a press reporter was asking kind of irrelevant questions to Srila Prabhupada that, you know, how much money have you got? How much money your society is making? And Prabhupada was completely disinterested in the question. And then, I can't exactly remember the past time now, but the devotee there showed, he, these are his books. So then the reporter asked about the books. Immediately Srila Prabhupada became very happy. And he started, oh, okay, he started speaking about the books. So Prabhupada was very happy about the books. And I was thinking about the glories of Srila Prabhupada books. And then as I was thinking, uh, you, know, you know, just some ideas would come to my mind. And that turned into verses. So it was going on. So I started with one verse, then two and three. And in a matter of in one, two months, it became 20 verses. Then, uh, then I you know, we got translated and uh, Rasa Mataji helped, Rasandri Mataji helped to edit it and also Prana Prabhu also helped to edit it. And then maybe three weeks back, uh, I was speaking to Govinda Hari Prabhu. So Govinda Hari was telling me, we were discussing about the verses, then he was telling, there is more there, so better you explain it, you write it. So he said he can edit it. Then I started writing, so then it came out to be a small book, you know, digitally I have about 150 pages. <laughs> and. Uh, if it is normally maybe more over 100 pages. So I'll just read the, uh, the Sanskrit and the translation. But other, the digital book I have, of, I'm offering to Prabhupada uh, on the digital copy and I'll send it to everyone the, as a digital copy later sometime. And uh, Govinda Hari Prabhu put a lot of effort to create a video around it with the help of other devotees who can sing very well and also with the nice footages. So without wasting much, much time, I'll just quickly yeah. Uh, if you can't, what, he, what he's saying is, if you can't read it, you can also watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. So the offering is Srila Prabhupada Kripopaharastavaha, meaning uh, glorification of a glorification of merciful gift of Srila Prabhupada. Subhakti Bhavartha Sudhabhi Varshinam. Bhavan Mahodara Kripa Swarupinam Parampara Jnana Revim Namamyaham Sushastra Rashim Prabhupada Te Kritam With great respect, I bow down to the wondrous transcendental literature created by Srila Prabhupada. They shower nectarian pure devotional purports and like the sun, brilliantly radiate spiritual wisdom from the bona fide Disciplic succession. These books are the manifest forms of Srila Prabhupada's most magnanimous mercy. 
to Mahaprabhu Prema Sudhaika Samputam Mahantarupadyubadesha Sambhutam Namami Siddhanta Manortha Puranam Sushastra Rashim Prabhupada Tekritam Srila Prabhupada's transcendental books are the very receptacles that carry Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu's love within this world. Their very composition is the teachings of great devotees such as Srila Rupa Goswami and other stalwarts of Vrindavan. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur desired for you to author books that will be fully potent for the deliverance of the entire world. In the form of your books, the desire of your spiritual master has materialized. With deep gratitude, I bow down to the transcendental books written by your divine grace. Mm. Verse 3. Tamontakanam alikho manasvinam hiteratoyam kripaya mahamuni pura puranani yatha namamitam Sushastra Rashim Prabhupada Tekritam. O Srila Prabhupada, out of compassion, you compose books that are equally suitable for the gross ignorant masses and for the intelligentsia. In the past, the great sage Vyasadeva wrote Puranas that were presented to attract the entire spectrum of humanity. Your books are of the same nature, being attractive and beneficial for everyone. I offer my humble and respectful obeisances unto the transcendental books written by your divine grace. Verse 4. Yathartha Gita Rasatattva Samyutam Purana Rat Bhagavatartha Deepakam Namami Chaitanya Katha Amrita Pradam Sushastra Rashim Prabhupata Tekritam Srila Prabhupata your transcendental collection of books includes the authentic Bhagavad Gita as it is, your illumination on the principles of Rasa Tattva, the nectar of devotion, the unconquerable king amongst all Puranas, the Srimad Bhagavatam, shining radiantly with your commentary, and the nectarian pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. With great awe, I bow down to your library of transcendental books. Mukunda Leela Makaranda Niradam Achindya Tattvartha Mahamrita Pradam Namami Vijnana Viragadainam Sushastra Rashim Prabhupada Tekritam Srila Prabhupada, through your books you have bestowed the most nectarian meaning of Lord Chaitanya's Achintya Bheda Bheda Tattva philosophy. At the same time, these books are like a cloud formed of the honey of the divine pastimes of Lord Mukunda, as in the Krishna book. These books delineate the practical application of Bhakti Yoga and avoid detachment from material desires to their readers. I offer my humble and respectful obeisances unto your transcendental books. Verse 6. Sudarshanam sam smaranam suvachanam Punati yas parshana meva tamasam Yathapi va gora harer namamitam Sushastra rashim prabhupada te kritam Simply by the divine touch of Sri Gorahari, by being in his personal presence, simply by remembrance of him or by chanting of his holy names, even the most ignorant persons become purified. A similar effect is experienced by reading thinking about seeing or just by touching Srila Prabhupada's divine books, I offer my humble obeisances unto Srila Prabhupada's transcendental books. Verse 7. Agatha tattva artha yutam tu sugraham aneka vedartha mayam cha siddhitam ananya bhakti pradameva naumitam Sushastra Rashim Prabhupada Tekritam Innumerably deep and impenetrably profound philosophical truths from the Vedic literatures are made easily accessible by Srila Prabhupada's books. Their purports guide the reader in rendering exclusive devotional service to Sri Krishna. 
I offer my heartfelt obeisances unto Srila Prabhupada's books that award the perfection of life. Verse 8. Sabhava Padyartha Padartha Samyutam Aneka Pasha Piriha Prakashitam Bhaje Prasidhai Prabhudhai Prashamsitam Sushastra Rashim Prabhupada Tekritam Srila Prabhupada's books are endowed with precise word-for-word -word translation of original scriptural texts. The accurate and intended meaning of the text is provided by verse translation. And the texts are further explained with authoritative purports. Translated and published into numerous languages, these books have been admired by distinguished scholars all around the world. With great awe and veneration, I bow down to the books of Srila Prabhupada. Verse 9. Parampara vak saritam susangame madinni majje dihayat sudharase sudhi sadha sarva sukhaya tam bhaje sushastra rashim prabhupada te kritam. Srila Prabhupada's books are the nectarian confluence of the rivers formed by the numerous teachings from all bona fide Vaishnava paramparas. Intelligent persons desiring complete transcendental happiness should always bathe their discriminative intelligence in these books. I worship and serve the transcendental books written by Srila Prabhupada. Verse 10. Bhuviha sanghasya mukunta chetasam samashrayoyat vimala pramodhanam navanga bhakti abjaravim namamitam Sushastra Rashim Prabhupada Tekritam. The pure teachings of Srila Prabhupada's books are the basis and the ultimate shelter for all the devotees of our Krishna conscious society all over the world. <coughs> like the sun, these books blossom and nourish the lotuses of nine kinds of devotion service. With sublime appreciation and gratitude, I bow down to Srila Prabhupada's transcendental books. Tadichaya bhakti vidhana sambhritam Ajayathayam tu kalau samarpitam Namami sakshat harivang mayam param Sushastra rashim prabhupada te kritam Srila Prabhupada, as desired by Lord Sri Krishna, you appeared in this age of Kali specially to deliver this book, these law books of bhakti yoga. They are the direct manifestation of the divine instructions of the Lord for humanity at large. I offer my humble and respectful obeisances unto transcendental books written by your divine grace. Verse 12. Yathaiva bhaktir hridaye prasidhyati tathaiva yodar shayadi kramathare sugupta tattvani namami bhaktidam sushastra rashim prabhupada te kritam by reading Srila Prabhupada's books, bhakti is established in the heart. Mm. As the reader's understanding of these books translates into practical devotion service in their life, these books further reveal more confidential truths about Sri Hari to them. I offer my humble and respectful obeisances unto Srila Prabhupada's <coughs> transcendental books. Verse 13. Kripardra goranga mano vyathaushadham prakirtanam yat prachura pracharanam bhavagadam deha bhritam bhajamatam sushastra rashim prabhupada te kritam. Wide and profuse distribution of Srila Prabhupada's books is the panacea for the transcendental anxiety for the suffering conditioned souls experienced in the soft and compassionate heart of Lord Goranga. Let us worship and serve Srila Prabhupada's transcendental books, which are the cure for the living being's disease of repeated birth and death. Mm. Verse 14. Gurum chatatam paramarthinam priyam sukheja dukhe suhurdam cha sarthikam namami mateva cha santuna pradam Sushastra Rashim Prabhupada Te Kritam. For devotees who are seekers of the absolute truth, Srila Prabhupada's books serve as their instructing spiritual master, as their supportive father, as their well-wishing friend standing by 
in both good and bad times as a faithful companion in their spiritual journey as a consoling mother who is always present in time of distress and as their beloved in their life i offer my humble obeisances to the transcendental books written by shila prabhupath which takes so many roles to guide and guard their readers mm. 15 bahuni durgaani taran gurur gira उपातापोदी कृपा मोपियम निशीधवेलास्वलिखो नमा तम सुशास्त्रशि प्रभुपाद ओशिल प्रभुपाद यू हैप्पीली एक्सेप्टेड काउंटलेस हार्डशिप्स टू कैरी आउट द ऑर्डर ऑफ युअर गुरु महाराज श्रील भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर इन दिस सर्विस यू कॉन्कर्ड इन न्यूमरेबल ऑब्स्टिकल्स टू एस्टैब्लिश एंड स्प्रेड the krishna consciousness movement all over the world you authored these books during the midnight hours out of deep compassion for the suffering souls of this world i offer my humble and respectful obeisances unto your transcendental books verse 16 mukunda pada abja paraga saurabha samira samparka sudha pradayinam नमामि तद्विस्मृतिनाशन नृण सुशास्त्रशि प्रभुपाद ई ऑफर मै हमबल एंड रेस्पेक्टफुल ओबेसेंस अन् टू शील प्रभुपा ट्रांसडल बुक्स दे कैरी द नेक्टेरियन ब्रीस लेडन विद द फ्रेग्रेंस ऑफ सैफ्रॉन डस्ट पार्टिकल्स फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम द लोटस लाइक फीट ऑफ लॉर्ड मुकुंद being imbued with such transcendental potencies these books destroy forgetfulness of krishna in the heart of the reader who come in touch with them verse 17 bhavat kripa abdher virahena vihvala bhajanti yam tvam anubhuya sarvata prabodhane yasya pare namamitam सुशास्त्रशि प्रभुपाद ओशिल प्रभुपाद ओ ओशन ऑफ मर्सी लॉन्गिंग फॉर युअर पर्सनल असोसिएशन युअर डिवोटेड फॉलोवर्स फील एंग्विस्ड इन पेन ऑफ सेपरेशन फ्रॉम यू दे आर पैसिफाइड बाय एक्सपीरियंसिंग युअर पर्सन्स एक्सपीरियंसिंग युअर पर्सनल पर्सन्स इन दिस डिवाइन टीचिंग्स ऑफ युअर बुक्स दे वर्शिप दिस ट्रांसेंडेंटल बुक्स बाय सर्विंग दम पर्पचुअली I repeatedly offer my heartfelt obeisances unto the transcendental books by your divine grace. Verse 18. Nimagna dhiyan nigamartha niratha upaidi nartyan parikirta yan smaran hare padabjam paramam namamitam suchastra rashim prabhu padate kritam Shila Prabhupada's books contain an ocean of devotional purports to the Vedic texts. one whose intelligence is immersed in the teachings of these books and who engages in sankirtan by hearing chanting remembering and dancing will attain the supreme shelter of lord krishna's lotus feet i offer my humble obeisances <coughs> humble and respectful obeisances unto shila prabhupas divine books verse 19 punat loka nihayat prashikshanam dadamayam bhuri bhuvi ha shevadhim समस्तूत हिताय नौमित सुशास्त्रशि प्रभुपाद फॉर द स्पिरीचुअल बेनिफिट ऑफ ऑल वी द फॉलोवर्स ऑफ शील प्रभुपा प्रे फॉर द एबिलिटी टू प्रोफ्यूसली डिस्ट्रीब्यूट द ट्रेशर ऑफ शील प्रभुपा बुक्स ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड बाय द टीचिंग्स ऑफ दिस बुक्स लेट द हार्ट ऑफ द मासस बी क्लेंस्ड टू दिस एंड ई ऑफर मै हमबल एंड रेस्पेक्टफुल ओबेसेंस अन् टू शील प्रभुपा ट्रांसेंडेंटल बुक्स last verse verse 20 param guroham kripano bisadaram pradadu madhe tumimam prabodhitam kripam chayache satatam namamitam sushastra rashim prabhu padate kritam o shila prabhupad o param gurudeva this very fallen and wretched soul respectfully bows and begs for your mercy i wish to thoroughly learn the divine teachings in your books and imbibe them practically in my life i especially beg for your mercy to be able to distribute your books to preach their message and to teach their content far and wide 
I repeatedly offer my humble and respectful obeisances unto Srila Prabhupada's books. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Just something that he happened to be thinking about over the last couple of months. <laughs> Thank you, Gobavrindesh Prabhu. I kind of got a, a feeling of what it would be like to, uh, you know, go to a, <clears throat> a Dig Vijay celebration where the pundits are praising the Lord. But especially praising Srila Prabhupada's books, very appropriate. Um, Dhabi Vrindesh is our outreach, you know, coordinator. So we should all support his prayers and meditation by increasing our book distribution. We had, well, in the Christmas marathon last year, we had 130 devotees went out on book distribution. And we sold a hundred and what ten thousand dollars worth of books, something like that. Made a profit of sixty thousand. And um, we only have what three or four book distributors in the ashram, so that means all of you were doing book distribution. So let's take inspiration from um, Gopa Vrindesha's beautiful meditation on Prabhupada's books. What did Prabhupada say? Double it. Double it. <laughs> we had 10 verses from him last year in glorification of Srila Prabhupada. Now we've got 20 <laughs> this year. Uh, so that means we've got to also double our book distribution in the Christmas marathon. We're already doing pretty good this year so far, actually. The, the results are quite good. But thank you, Gopa Vindesh Prabhu. Very relishable. Now, um, I think... I think we should do Guru Puja. What do you think? Is that right? We've got probably got a few other offerings, but uh, we, we're sorry, we're probably never going to have enough time to glorify Srila Prabhupada, I suppose. But Hare Krishna. Thank you, everybody. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. We can have the women on the Dank Street side and the men on uh, the courtyard side of the temple room. And uh, 